Peckham has become the epicentre for London's grassroots art scene over the past few years. Its low rent spaces and immersive community make a breeding ground for creativity. And whilst many publications have gone into detail about how desirable this area is becoming, many have refused to acknowledge exactly how this area came to carry such importance. The Peckham you see now didn't come from the new businesses that opened up. More, these businesses exist because of Peckham's fighting community. And nobody has fought harder for this than Peckham Vision's Eileen Conn. My name is Eileen Conn and I've lived in Peckham in the same house for 42 years. I had a lot of experience in setting up our local residence group and various other community groups. About 15 years ago there were things happening in my neighbourhood which got me involved again. I discovered through, I was tracking the council's planning policy process and discovered that there was a big site just on the other side of the road from the station. It was scheduled for demolition as far as the council was concerned. When I went on the site, I discovered there were lots of people working there and small businesses. So we decided, with the owners of the site, to arrange a public meeting in this building, the Bussy Building, in January 2006. And so by 2009, when Transport for London finally conceded that it wasn't the right place for the tram depot, and that wasn't actually very good for Peckham Town Centre either. A lot of new things were already happening on the site. Eileen's involvement in the community and unrelenting motivation to prove Peckham has a place in London has led to her being given a space in Holdren's Arcade to gather her constantly updating list of causes, including cleaning up the streets and stopping the building of a new multi-storey car park that would ruin the Peckham skyline. So who knows what would have happened if we hadn't been around. Certainly we can point to the fact that the site we're in now and the building that we're in now, if the authorities' plans had gone ahead, they would, they would have been demolished by now, and the tram had come. The planning policy for this site is now what we were talking about ten years ago. Is there a different future for these buildings and this site, which is about creativity, about new enterprises, about small businesses, about an organic evolution, and that's what's happening. Now we're embarked on Peckham multi-storey saga, and we're at the stage there that we were in the early period of what we were doing on this site. I'm convinced, having worked in this way now for a long time, that this gets better information, and we need to get that better information into the processes that, at the moment, local government and the professions that work with them keep tightly to themselves and don't want anybody else involved. In addition, Mickey Smith, who set up the CLF Art Cafe, when he came and joined our campaign in 2007, he was really making a success of it and he himself was, of course, publicising all the opportunities there were. If I'm honest, one of the biggest things that Peckham has got going for is Eileen Con. I'll be frank, I think without Eileen being around, I think a lot of projects that happen, um, how do you say it? A lot of things that, that haven't happened would have happened if she wasn't here. And I think it's the same now. A lot of things that she's revealing or, you know, galvanising people, she's not getting paid for this. And for me, she's like, she's a proper champion because she really has. I mean, she, she pulls people together. She goes, I'm glue. I pull people together. She pulled me in, she pulled this in, and she pulls that in. Um, so we set up CLF. And funny enough, after a couple of years of pitching really good ideas and people saying, yeah, your ideas are amazing, they will change the world, but you know, where's your infrastructure, where's your building? I bumped into Eileen Con. Eileen Con told me about this huge estate that was going to be knocked down for the sake of uh, building the tram depot. Would I, you know, you should come out and look at this building. So I said, all right. So I came down here with Eileen, saw it and went, this is amazing. Joined Peckham Vision and we sat down and there was a, we had a clear meeting where we said, okay, one of the problems with the uh, with Peckham is that everybody looks at Peckham and the perception of Peckham as a, a shithole, you know, violent, it's this, that and ever. So first we have to change what people think of Peckham and how they see it. The council, when I first met them, they'd given up on Peckham. They, I mean, really given up. You know, like the MP turning up with the stab proof vest for Peckham, you must have heard about that. You know, these things were really clear signs that even the MP, if you hear, just had a wrong view of what was actually happening. This was a soaking wet, file storage room with water all on the floor, metal panels on the window, damp, smelly, everything in here was rotting, load of old rotting sculptures, uh, so we literally emptied it, um, soundproofed it, put in triple glazing, and we just built it, you know, so it hasn't displaced anything, it's just, it's just evolved what's already here. And we brought the same people in house who were, uh, from the first meeting they were saying this is a blight on the landscape of Peckham and must be removed. Within a year they were coming back saying this is the most important place in Peckham and it must be saved. 
The establishment of the CLF Art Café is what defined the saviour of Copeland Park and the Bussey Building, which both provide a multitude of spaces. There are small startups using it as office space, bands using it as a practice room, and performers using the multi-story building to showcase local comedy and theater. I think music's one of the most important languages we have to communicate, you know? It's like universal, it, you know, it can move your soul, literally can move you from tears to the biggest of joys. And I think it's a really crucial part of any community. Should music, arts, culture is crucial to any community. I think it's really important. Otherwise, what's the, what, what's the point of living? Yeah. You know, earn your money, go home. Earn your money, go home. I don't think so. We live for more than that, you know, yeah. so I think it's crucial. Although, the area has not had it easy and has recently warded off the installation of luxury flats and a boutique shopping district after a petition protesting this gained 15,000 signatures in less than a month. Receiving a very large amount of media attention due to the gentrification of the area, Peckham has become as synonymous as Shoreditch or Hackney in relation to rising house prices and culture sacrifice. We got wind of a planning application to change a retail furniture store in Rye Lane into Foxton's property estate agents, who are um, associated with most gentrification in one way or another. Now, do we need estate agents in Rye Lane? Most of Foxton's, and you hardly ever see anybody in the Foxton's. We got one on Lordship Lane. It's all online. What's the point of them taking up a huge amount of space, which is otherwise for important real economy stuff, which is retail? The problem I've got is that I think the problem you should, that, that I think to identify is displacement as opposed to evolution. If you evolve a place by adding more to it and maybe upgrading what's already there, then you've got a chance of keeping what makes it special. But unfortunately, it seems to be one eats the other. One comes in and just eats the other one up and then goes, oh, do you know what? I can afford more rent than you next door. So I'm going to go to your landlord. I'm going to offer twice the rent and get rid of you. I mean, we're going to carry on doing what we're doing. But I mean, I just think that Peckham's got a long way to go yet. And I think that one of its only saving graces, or biggest saving grace that might stop the gentrification is the fact that we've got all these unused railway arches that have been used for scaffold storage and stuff. There's a lot to develop without touching what's here, if that makes sense. This area has a rich Afro-Caribbean culture, as well as a number of other smaller cultures. Restaurants and many local businesses have been replaced by bigger companies willing to buy out the space. Local writer and owner of Persepolis, Sally Butcher, has seen Peckham throughout its regeneration. Yes, I mean, house prices have shot up from affordable to extremely unaffordable um, in an astonishing amount of time. The housing might have changed, but people haven't, and long may it stay the same. So um, there are two Peckhams, one of which is well and truly soundly regenerated, um, and the other, I'm hoping, will remain untouched forever. I mean, I've always felt that it's the safest area in London. People look out for each other, whereas in other parts of London, you can walk in the street and, and you know, people cross the road if you're in trouble. In Peckham, there's never, ever, ever a case of that. Sally isn't just a business owner. She's an outspoken public speaker who's had faith in Peckham since she opened up shop 15 years ago. We, I, well, I, I was one of the co-founders of the I Love Peckham Festival and the Peckham Literary Festival. Um, and we, this business of I Love Peckham is, I mean, we have it on our bags. I've got it on the back of my T-shirt now. Uh, we spread it everywhere. We try to spread it all over the world. It's obvious that the future of this area isn't quite written in stone, but the love and faith shown by the local community is surely enough to protect the area's culture. If you could ever get to the point where every community had a little organisation with an Eileen Con that really knew the laws, that everybody in the community could go to that represented them, I think you'd find that a lot of communities and gentrification would be, become not a word of the past, but would be a lot harder to gentrify an area because you know, the red flags would go up when the planning permissions were going down to knock down that historical building or, or rents going up or that or to galvanise the media to get behind certain things, you know, and that's what every area needs. So I feel complete that what I was thinking ten years ago wasn't rubbish. It's taken a long time to prove it. And I feel the same about the station area and the same about multi-story and actually lots of places in Peckham Town Centre that have just as much important issues that we've never been able to focus on and they're being ba badly handled in exactly the same way. All we can do is, with our limited capacity, is try to show a different way that we hope people will copy.